This video is for anybody who wants to make a mobile game. We'll be talking specifically about game inputs and how they work on mobile devices. Now we do have a video already on touchscreen controls that go over some things that won't be in this video, so be sure to check that one out after this. But we get a lot of people asking about how to control their game on mobile devices. So I'm going to show you a number of ways to interact with and control your mobile game. To begin with, I have a platformer example because that's a great place to start. We have a little platformer character, and they have the platformer behavior. In the event sheet, they're being controlled with A, D, and space, so I don't have to use the arrow keys. Now the first thing to talk about is that anything that you can do with the mouse and left click, you can do with a mobile device. So a quick example is, I can add the draggable object behavior and drag this object around. This will work the exact same way on a mobile device because I'm using the left click and mouse. So when you touch the screen, it counts as pressing down the left button and then you can drag it around the screen and when you let go, it counts as releasing the left mouse button. So that's the most basic control. Next, we'll go to the object list and we'll go down through the list and show you what can work with mobile devices. For inputs, the multi-touch joystick controls work just fine on mobile devices because that's what they're meant for, as well as the panel sprite button, sliders, toggle switches, and the text input object. On a mobile device, if you put the text input object on screen and click into it, you should have a touchscreen keyboard show up on screen that will let you type in things for the text input object. But speaking of buttons, there's also an extension called Button State. This extension will give you access to hovered, pressed, clicked, and idle as conditions for each object, as well as allow you to control different effects on the object. So if you install that in the project, you can go to Behaviors and add Button States to your object. Now if I go to the Event Sheet, I can go to my Player object, and there are button states right here. And again, these all work with the left mouse button, so I can click on my character to interact with them. So if I go is clicked for the jumping instead of the space key, remove that, preview, I can click on the character to make them jump. Normally you wouldn't do that, you'd have a separate button on screen, so let's do that. If I go to the asset store and look up an arrow button, I've got here my object list. If I scroll out, I can add a layer, call it mobile controls, and add that button to the screen. Make sure to put it into the mobile controls layer, and then give that the button states behavior, and change this to the top arrow button being clicked. And now while I use the A and D key to walk around, I can use the jump button to jump. Now, is clicked is only true when you release the left mouse button. So you might want to use is pressed instead. Because then it triggers the moment you interact with it. Like I said, anything that works for the left mouse click and mouse controls works with a mobile device. So if I search for mouse, then I can use left mouse button is released see if it's pressed or held, and even though you can't use the scroll wheel to zoom the camera in and out like you would in some games, there's an extension called Pinch Gesture that will allow you to zoom in, zoom out, rotate with pinch gestures like you would on Google Maps. And there's another one for swipe gestures as well. The swipe gestures, if I install in the project, I can see all the new swipe gestures that have come into the project now with that extension. And the quickest way to use this extension is by using these two conditions. You can check to see which direction the swipe is moving in. And same with all eight directions. Now to use the built-in platformer or top-down behaviors, you can add a bunch of buttons on screen to control the different directions and then put them into your event sheet. But you can also use the multi-touch joystick object. So if I add that to the scene, put it on the mobile control layer, stretch it out. I can go to my platformer character, 
and in behaviors, look up remap. And there's one for platformer and top down. So if I grab the one for the platformer, I can pick which joystick is being used. If I go to the joystick, I can see here which number it is, so I can make sure that that aligns with the number that I have in the behavior. So I'll disable these and preview the game. Now, the joystick is right here, and when I go over, you can see that the platformer character is being controlled by the joystick. Even though I don't have the animation set up with the joystick, because you'll still have to set those up in your event sheet. And you can do that by checking to see which direction is pushed in. So if I type in the identifier for it, which for this joystick is 1, I can check to see if it's going in one of these directions. So I can go to where my character animations are happening and set it up so that if joystick 1 is moving to the right, we'll flip the character. If it's going to the left, we won't flip the character. And there we go. Now the animations are happening along with the character. And you can also easily set this up for a top-down character. So if I remove those, zoom back into the play area, and add this character into the scene, I can give them the top-down behavior, make sure it doesn't rotate, and then give it the remap behavior for the top-down behavior for the multi-touch joystick. I can pick what kind of controller I want, make sure the identifier is the same, and press apply. And then when I preview the game, this character now moves with the joystick.